You're talking about omnipotence and power. God threw him down to the earth, cursed him and judged it, wiped out the whole planet only to start it all back again in Genesis chapter number one and then go to the ground, make this thing called a man and announce to the devil, just like you had to obey me in heaven, you're going to have to obey him in the earth. Which means you and I were originally created to, to have authority over him. See, this is why you got to understand the ascension dimension. And so Adam and Eve walk around in this authority, in this glory, in this image of God. Their spirit, their identity is that of God. Their authority is that of God. They are the image of God wrapped in flesh. This was God's will. Then your Bible declares, though, that God gave them one command. I give you this whole earth. I give you dominion over everything. I give you one commandment. Don't eat of the tree. Don't eat of it. Why? The day you eat of it, you shall surely die. Adam Satan says, that's my chance. This is my chance to get out from under the authority of Adam. I got to get him to die. Your Bible declares that he slithered into the garden, possessed the serpent, deceives the woman. She gives it to Adam. He eats of the fruit and he dies. Now, he didn't die physically. He lived to be 930 years old. So what death are we talking about? Yeah, his spirit See, physical death is when your spirit leaves the body. Spiritual death is when God's nature leaves the spirit. He lost the image of God, the likeness of God. His mind went blank and everything that God blew in him, he lost it. He lost dominion. He lost authority. Therefore, mankind now is not in God's image. Now they've fallen into sin. Now in our hearts are corruption and wickedness and perversion. And now we've lost authority over the earth. Now Satan has been released in the earth realm to become now the God of this world. To rule like he always wanted to. So that he could thumb his nose at God and say, now what are you going to do? I'm in authority in the earth realm and the man that you put over me has fallen. Now there's no one here in your image. Now there's no one here in your likeness. Now there's no one here to have authority over me. And God looked at him and said, you getting happy way too early, Satan. He says, because I got a heel coming for your head. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. He said, you better keep your head up because everything that Adam lost, I got a way to get it all back. Somebody shout, somebody shout, somebody shout. And it is this purpose in which Jesus came down through 42 generations, wrapped himself in flesh, smuggled inside of the womb of a virgin, pops out on the scene and what do we have here we have the last Adam he is coming to get something back that was lost that's why Jesus whole mission has the prefix re attached to it re he's coming to redeem well to restore to revive to return to renew which means he's coming to do some back again he's coming to get some back he's coming to recover he's coming to yeah he's coming to get something back and Jesus comes into the earth realm for one 
purpose. He's coming to get us back our image, likeness, and dominion. Jesus didn't come into the earth just so that you can sit on a church pew and wait for the morning train. He came into this earth so that he can give you back power that you had, dominion that you had, an image that you had, glory that you had. And oh, by the way, let the devil know he's about to get back under your feet again. Oh, this is what this is what Paul is praying that the church would come into a revelation of. And so Jesus now has to come back and recover what was lost. He's coming after our identity. He's coming to give us back our authority. He's coming back to give us back our glory. He's coming back to give us what we lost. And now let me fast forward. He's on the cross. And the Bible declares he said some things that are very strange on the cross. He's in the Garden of Gethsemane and he's praying, Lord, is there another way? Oh, put your hand on your head. You're going to need some help right here. Come on. Put your hand on your head. Say, I bind my mind. Come on, say it right now. Because I ain't preaching to your head. I'm preaching to your spirit. That's why something on the inside of you is starting to kick on the inside of there. Because something is coming alive. Something is coming alive in you. It's your DNA. It's starting to kick in. Watch what I'm about to tell you. This is what we've got to shift into. Your Bible declares that Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane and he's praying. He's praying, Father, is there any other way to do this? The father says, no, son, you got to pay the price. Adam died, and the price to bring them back to life is you've got to die. Not just physically, but you've got to go through spiritual death. You've got to become sin. Jesus says, all right. He goes back three times until he is sweating great drops of blood because he's coming after our redemption. And Jesus basically is saying, for you and you and you, I'll do this. Because he could not stand to see us weak, defeated, Satan attacking us, defeating us, destroying us. He couldn't take it because you and I were never wired for defeat. 